بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the first part of the expansion which is all exercises and practices about the whole uh, unit 1, 2, 3 and 4 So let's begin with language plus here the, the beginning of the expansion language plus exercise A Complete each sentence with an idiom shown be sure to put each idiom in the correct tense. So, of course, you can see the pictures, and each idiom is written underneath the uh, underneath the picture, of course. So, these are the idioms you see: see red, see red. So, what is the man doing? How does the man feel? And also, flying colors, Fly the picture of uh, the flags. You can see flying colors. What do you think the man might be saying? What do you think the man might be saying? Did he get good grades at the exam? Green with envy, envy. What are the parents giving their son? Who is the person with the green face? How does he feel? So of course, see it. What is the man doing? He's throwing litter into the man's yard. So he's throwing litter or garbage into the man's yard. How does the man feel? How does the man feel? From the idiom, see red. How does the man feel? I think you can guess, of course. He feels angry. He is seeing red. He feels angry. When you angry, your face turns red. So he is seeing red. Flying colors here. What do you think the man might be saying? The man standing next to the flags. Well, try to guess anything. What do you think that he might be saying? Of course, he's standing proud, as you can see him. So, what do you think that he might be saying? For example, he, maybe he's saying, I'm so clever, because he, maybe he's proud of himself. Did he uh, get good grades at the exam? Of course, yes, he did. Green with envy. What are the parents giving their son? What are the parents giving uh, their son? A new car. Who is the person with the green face? So the person envying the other person. Who is the person with the green face? Try to guess. Just say anything. Yes, for example, maybe his brother. Maybe his brother, maybe not. We're just guessing here. How does he feel? He is very jealous. He's green with envy. Of course, envy means that you wish that you had what, other, what others uh, have, you are uh, jealous of them, this is envy. Green thumb, is the man a successful gardener? Catch someone red-handed, what is the little boy doing? Who is watching him? Is he supposed to be doing this? And roll out the red carpet, all of these are idioms, the colored words. Who is the man in the picture? What, uh, what is the man doing? So, is the man a successful gardener? This is the green thumb. Of course, you know the thumb. This is the thumb. So, when they say this man has a green thumb, so is the man a successful gardener? Yes. When someone has a green thumbs, he is good at making plants grow. So, he's a good farmer or a good uh, gardener, maybe. So, again, is the man a successful gardener? Yes, of course, from the picture you can see. When, uh, when someone has green thumbs, of course the thumbs, are not, the thumbs are not literally green, this is just an idiom. They are not literally green. Again, when someone has green thumbs, it means that he is good at making plants grow. Catch someone red-handed, red-handed, it means that his hand is red. Again, it's not literally red. But what does it mean? We will see. What is the little boy doing? You can look at the picture here. What is the little boy doing? So, taking cookies from the cookie jar. Taking cookies, as you can see in the picture, from the cookie jar. Who's watching him? Yes, his father. Is he supposed to be doing this? Is he supposed to be, to be uh, doing this, taking the cookies from the cookie jar? Of course not. No, he caught him in the act of doing it. He caught him red-handed. So this is what, uh, what, uh, what means to be red-handed. Again, no, he caught him 
the, in the act of doing it. So he caught him red-handed. So it caught some, to, to catch someone red-handed, it means that you caught them in the act while they are doing the maybe crime, maybe not just taking a cookie jar here. Roll out the red carpet. Roll out the red carpet. You know the red carpet, the long red carpet, uh, the red carpet they put for celebrities maybe or sometimes in front of restaurants. So who is the man in the picture? Who is in the man in the picture? Just try to guess here. So maybe that he is a celebrity. What's the man doing? He is rolling out a red carpet. It's a sign of welcome for a famous or important, important person. So to roll, uh, to, roll, uh, to roll down, to roll out a red carpet, it means that it's a sign of uh, welcome for a famous or important person. This is what it means to roll out the red carpet. Try to use the idioms to talk about your own experiences or things you've seen. So try to use these idioms with your own experiences. Maybe you, you can say, one time I get caught red-handed, red one time I had a green thumb, maybe you plant some plants. For example, have you ever caught someone red-handed at something? Maybe you say, I caught my brother red-handed, he's trying to take your books or your pens. Have you ever been green with envy? Have you ever envied someone? You have been green with envy. What makes you red? What makes you see red? See red, of course, means angry. What makes you angry? What makes you see red? Did anyone ever roll out the red carpet for you when you visited? It means, did anyone, uh, when you visited, they welcomed you with a warm hearts, of course. The red, to roll out the red carpet, it means to welcome someone. So just use these idioms in answering these questions. So getting back to our question here, complete each sentence with an idiom shown. Be sure to put each idiom in the correct tense. So the first one, the thief was with his hand still in the businessman's jack, uh, jacket pocket. The thief was with his hand still in the businessman's jacket pocket. So choose an idiom and pay attention to, uh, to the tense of the idiom. So number one is the thief was caught red-handed, of course. The thief was caught red-handed because his hands are still in the businessman's jacket pocket. Number two, look at my garden. Garden, I think we know the answer here. No matter how hard I try, uh, nothing grows. I guess I don't have a, yes, this is an easy one, a green thumb. So nothing grows in my garden. I don't have a green thumb. Number three, when I found out that my sister had taken my cell phone without my permission and then lost it, I, again, when I find out that my sister had taken my cell phone without my permission and then she lost it. So was I happy or angry? So, of course, I saw red. I was very angry. When our grandparents came to visit, we took them to all the best trans restaurants in town. We really, so we really did what? Again, when our grandparents came to visit, we took them to all the best restaurants in town. We really, a sign of welcome, yes, rolled out the red carpet. We really rolled out the red carpet. Number five, I passed the test in every subject with, so I passed the test with every subject. With what? I'm proud of myself here. Yes, very good. With flying colors. Number six, he has my dream job. So when someone has your dream job, I think this is an easy one. I was when he first told me about it. So he has my dream job. I was very good green with envy when he first told me about it. Very good. Of course, this is an easy exercise. When learning a verb, it's a good idea to learn the preposition that go with the verb. Again, when learning any verb, it's a good idea to learn the prepositions that can go 
with the verb. So let's read about the verbs here. Tools for writing common errors with prepositions. So sometimes there are errors when putting prepositions next to verbs. So let's read together and try to learn here. Verbs that are followed by a certain preposition in English may be followed by a different preposition or no preposition at all in your language. Of course, in our language Arabic, it's not the same as English. If in, in English there's a verb next to a preposition, it doesn't have to be the same with Arabic. In order to make sure your writing is grammatically correct, it is important to learn which verbs are used with which prepositions in English. Study the following verbs plus prepositions. So now we'll be learning which prepositions come uh, comes with which verbs. Let's learn some of them, of course, not all of them. The first one here is look for. Look for. Can you help me to look for my keys? What's the meaning of look for? Yes, that's right. It, it's like uh, searching. Help me search for my keys. So look for, it means to search for something. Again, so the verb here is look and the preposition here is very good. It is for. So look for. Can you help me look for my keys? And not can you help me look my keys. So you have to put the preposition for. You can't say help me look my keys. Help me look for my keys. The next one here, ask for. Ask for. We need to ask for some help. We need to ask for some help. When you want some help, you say, I'm asking for some help. Not asking at or asking in or just asking. Cor uh, the incorrect uh, sentence here, not we need to ask help. Always ask for. This is the preposition that comes with the verb ask. Next here, depend on. Depend on. We may, we may not go, it depends on the weather. So the verb depend, it comes before the preposition on. We may not go, it, de it depends on the weather. And not, it depends of the weather. So we say depend on, not depend of. Next here, smile at, smile at. My mother was so proud, she kept smiling at me. When someone is seeing you and he keeps smiling, you say that he is smiling at me, not smiling on me or in me, or just smiling off me. So my mother was so proud, she kept smiling at me, not she kept smiling off me. So the correct preposition with smiling is at. Remind of remind of she reminds me of my grandmother she reminds me of my grandmother and not she reminds me my grandmother without any preposition so remind comes with of and the last one congratulate on congratulate on she congratulated me uh, him on the new job she congratulated him on the new job and not she congratulated him by Use on, not by. So here's a little exercise about the prepositions. Complete the sentences with the correct preposition. I like being surrounded color. I like being surrounded a color. So do we put by, in, on, at, surrounded? Yes, very good. By. White is worn brides. White is worn brides. So which preposition here? Yes, very good. Also by brides. White is worn by brides. Red is, asso is associated danger. Red is associated danger. Which preposition here? Do we say for, on? So the correct answer is with, of course. So associated with. Worn by, surrounded by. Next here, we respond color. We respond color. So the correct uh, proposition here is to. Respond 
to, not respond on or in or at, respond to. The last one, I feel passionately poetry. I feel passionately poetry. When you say I feel passionately something, so after passionately, so this is an easy one. Of course, you say about. So, surrounded by, worn by, associated with, respond to, passionately about. Writing prompt here, let's read the note first. In an, exp uh, in an expository essay, the writer explains, describes, or given information about a subject. Again, in expository essay, the writer explains, describes, or gives information about a subject. Let's read the writing prompt here. Write an expository essay about what different colors, symbols, customs, or gestures mean in your culture. So you'll be writing this essay in our culture, uh, culture in your culture. Write an expository essay about what different colors, different colors, different symbols, what do they mean in our culture, customs, gestures also. Say what you think this shows about your culture. Include grammar points from units one to four. So all the grammar points that we have taken in this curriculum, use them in this essay. So what is the essay about? Talk about, write an expository essay about different colors, symbols, customs, gestures, and what do they mean in our culture or in your culture. Again, use the grammar points from units one to four. So to write your expository essay, number one, decide whether you will write about colors, symbols, customs, or gestures in your culture. So decide which one. What do you think these show about your culture? This will be your topic sentence. So the topic sentence, the first sentence in the first paragraph. So this has to be the idea of the sentence. What do you think these show, the colors or the gestures or the symbols? What do they show about your uh, culture. Use a chart to organize your ideas. Write your topic sentence in the center circle. Then write ideas which support this topic sentence in the surrounding circles. Write a draft of your expository essay. Have a partner read and comment on your draft. Use your partner's comments and suggestions to revise your essay. So you'll be helping each other in your essay. Developing your writing body paragraphs that support the topic sentence. So the body, parag the, the, the body paragraphs the middle, in the middle of the essay that support the topic sentence. The paragraphs of an essay between the introduction and conclusion are called the body. The paragraphs between the introduction and the conclusion, they are called the body of the essay. Each body paragraph must have one main idea. So each body paragraph must have one main idea, as well as examples, definitions, facts, or statistics with support that uh, main idea. The main idea of each body paragraph must relate to and support the topic sentence in the introduction. As you write the body of your essay, ask yourself, so when you're writing the body of your essay, ask yourself these questions to get the more ideas to write. Does each paragraph have one main idea? So you have to reread each paragraph to ask yourself, does it have just one main idea or two or three? So be because of that, each body paragraph must have one main idea. Is this main idea supported by examples, definitions, facts, and or statistics? So you have to support your idea with examples and definitions. Does each paragraph support the topic sentence in the introduction. So each one is supporting each other. So this is the circle here, the center circle. The main idea, Korean culture is conservative. Of course, these are the branches of the idea. For example, here, greetings, bowing, no smiling, no uh, prolonged eye contact. So this is the beginning of the essay here. Customs and gestures in Korean culture. This is the title, of course. To understand the perspective of Korean people, it is important to understand their customs and gestures. What is a gesture? What is a gesture? A gesture is the, moving, uh, the movement of the hand or the head, so the movement of your body parts. 
on gestures i believe that korean customs and gestures show that the korean culture is quite traditional and conservative one aspect of korean culture that is traditional and conservative is greeting people korean people usually bow when they meet one another when koreans are introduced to someone for the first time they generally do not smile when we, they meet someone for the first uh, for the first time they do not smile smiling is reserved for informal occasions korean also considers st staring impolite we prefer to make only brief eye contact when meeting a korean person i suggest you avoid looking into his or her eyes for more than a moment or two so the general idea is the main idea is the korean culture is com conservative this is the branching here talking about greeting just that we have written in this essay look at the chart or web on the page this is a for this is a format often used to uh, for brainstorming ideas the writer puts the topic in the center and then writes the subtopics in the circles around it just you have seen in the uh, picture previously in the circle for each subtopic there can be notes of possible examples and other supporting information decide on a topic and make your own web with subtopics ideas and notes about the examples before you write your essay show your web to a partner so show it to a partner and get his feedback and try to organize your essays then listen to your partner's explanation you should question each other about anything that isn't clear and make suggestions for examples and information your partner's essay must might include lastly here reread your essays and revise them check to make sure that you used grammar points from units one to four for example here the subjunctive the i'd like you plus the infinitive I want you plus the infinitive, gerund after verbs, infinitives after verbs, adjectives order, two and enough gerunds as subjects, and the whole grammar for the whole units one, two, three, and four. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallah, wa bihamdik, ashadu ala lanta, astaghfirik, wa tubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.